All right, good afternoon. Welcome everyone to today's webinar event. My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter. Uh, it is promptly 1 p.m. Eastern time here. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, uh, a couple things before we get started on the events topic today. We're here to talk about the new dashboard feature function in the version 21 of Church Windows Accounting. Uh, if I believe, if I understand, I think the schedule correctly, I wasn't here for the first kind of her first portion of August. I think we had uh, a couple of other webinars on the dashboard and the other modules in membership, I think certainly, and maybe even donations. Um, we're here to talk about the one we have in accounting. Uh, so, you know, uh, we are recording today's webinar event. Um, we will put this out on our website here in the next, you know, week or 10 days or so. Um, if you'd like to review it, um, I'm going to kind of talk here for the next 20 minutes or less, probably. Um, the topic itself isn't terribly challenging. Um, it will be available for review. If you have questions, please type those into the questions portion of the webinar control panel. Um, I'll certainly keep do my best to keep an eye on that, and then I'll see what we can't do to get those answered. It is just me here today, folks. So. I don't have anybody answering questions, so if you know, please just be patient with me. I will get to your question. Um, we may ask you to call technical support. You know, if there's something else, uh, you know, that we're unable to answer, just we you know, want to have a little more time and flexibility to to try to figure out or resolve that for you. Um, or you know, and all I ask is that again, you please uh, keep the questions topical. Um, we're happy to talk about other questions you have just through support. The webinars are kind of constructed very specifically, and so I may not be equipped in my data or my thought process to answer your questions for you, not because I don't want to. I just may not be able to or be suited in a position to. Um, the All right, so we're here on version 21. Not everyone has version 21 yet. Um, we are sending those out uh, to our folks here in, in a couple of different waves here. We've got, I think, sent them out to half the folks. So 2118, 21.18 is the newest version of Church Windows. Uh, if you have not gotten yours, please give us a call or check your email. Uh, if you don't get that, you know, don't have that already, we will be sending it out shortly. If Again, if you're unsure when you're going to receive that, please call us, 800-533-5227. There are a couple ways that we can access the dashboard in Church Windows Accounting now. Um, with my highlighter friend, we've got the one right here above our little help question mark called dashboard. Okay, that's one way to access it. And then right up here under our special functions menu at the very top, let me get rid of my uh, highlighter friend here. And once we click on special functions, notice we have another one here called dashboard as well right here. And that opens the dashboard window itself. Um, one of the things that I really like to stress about the new versions 20 and 21 is that we are really, really doing our best to ensure that the help files folks are up to date. So the when we click on the dashboard and we open that, if I go, oh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at here, it's loading my data here. So if it says... Um, uh, so someone's asking, when will version 21 be available to Church Windows web users? Uh, Michael, that should be on Church Windows now. I think Summit Hosting may be the only one that it isn't updated yet for. Uh, that's because they were swapping out servers. It's expected to be out, uh, available sometime early this week. So keep an eye on that, but it should hopefully be in place uh, between now and the end of this week. So here we are at our dashboard window. I do like to point out that if we hit F1 on our keyboard here, it should open up our web browser, and in this case, we have to allow blocked content, but it should open right up to the accounting dashboard help topic in our help files. Um, you know, so that, this is basically, folks, what I'm using right now for the, for the printed material for today's webinar event are these help topics. So, you know, we are really, really trying our best to keep up with those. Um, so FYI, you do have the help topic on there. It also kind of goes through and has some nice pretty graphics in there of what you're going to see on the screen and what have you, some functionality. And we're going to talk about as much of this as we can. Um, so if I close out of the help files, 
it basically opens up the accounting dashboard. Basically, we've added some graphing capability to the software. Okay. Um, what I also kind of like to point out about stuff like this is, you know, we we build in what we perceive to be things that folks want, a structure of it. And so there is, you know, we've kind of got it so you can make some choices for like date ranges or accounts or things like that. But there isn't much flexibility other than that, okay? So we do that from a design perspective deliberately. I have a feeling this is going to go, this is going to go through some changes and some reworking over the course of the next couple of versions of Church Windows as we're hearing from users what's working and what's not working on the actual dashboard feature. So this will probably change a fair amount, well, some, over the course of the next two or three versions or so, okay? So, you know, again, so on our very first page of our help topic, it talks about accessing the accounting dashboard screen, again, either from the dashboard icon in the middle or under special functions and dashboard at the top. In either case, they both open the same dashboard function, dashboard screen, okay? Um, the dashboard looks like this. It's basically, it defaults to just a basic setting where it enables um, the full functionality of the dashboard function. So across the top, what we're talking about here is right here, right across the top, right here. These, I, these things right here across the very top of that, okay? Um, those are basically some toggles and switches primarily that allows some some control. So if you go, okay, I don't want to see my accounting account weekly balance report, you simply click that right facing that that little block to the right to move that toggle and notice it takes that report off of the list. Or I go, oh, I don't want to see my funds receipts disbursements report. I click on that and again same thing, it takes off that particular graph from the dashboard function. So, you know, they, they can literally be turned off and turned back on at will, okay? You're not deleting anything from the software. Uh, you're just say, basically saying, I want to hide it, okay? But we're going to leave them all enabled for the time being, okay? So again, we've got four report types or graph types. Account weekly balance, which is right here, account weekly balance. We've got the fund receipts disbursements which is right here, and then we've got our income versus expense right here, and then our budget versus actual, which is right here, okay? Those are the four different report types the, in, that we have available in the dashboard itself, okay? Um, in addition to those various toggles that enable or disable or hide those reports, you do have the capability to change some coloring on those reports. So yes, while we do have one in the list called default, that's the one our developers bring in, you can come in and play with any one of these particular changes for these colors to do this. You go, oh, okay, I, you know, and it changes it for all of them, folks, so it's not like you're choosing it for one particular report. But if you go, okay, I want my, you know, accounting weekly balance report to have one color and my fund receipts disbursements to have another, you just choose the color, print that report using the print, then close out of it, you know, choose to change the color, and then click the print button next to the next report, and the reports will print in those different colors, okay? It's a global color change. So if I go, okay, I want this to change to, you know, uh, let's see here, uh, orange-yellow. So if I go down to the bottom here, notice on all of my reports, they all change to an orange-yellow color scheme, essentially. Okay, um, and that's the one I put chose. I'm pretty sure I did. Where was it? Um, yeah, so again, you know, right here under the first one, it's that color, and then the other ones. So again, if I want to now, you know, if I print a report and then want to change it, I just have to go to my colors. You can always choose the reset to default layout, and that'll go back to that. Uh, well, it apparently didn't do it for the, um, for the colors, so now I'm going to go back to my colors and choose uh, default, and that'll go back to that. Okay? But it will reset your accounts and date ranges and what have you, okay? All right. Um, you can minimize or maximize it if you're not seeing the full functionality um, of that. Uh, you can just maximize it, and it will maximize it for the full screen, okay? 
Uh, that would be particularly important to do if perhaps you're not seeing the full f functionality of it. Um, I'm being asked, how far back does the dashboard pick up? I mean, I think it's only going to be in the accounting year that we're in. In this case, Victoria, notice we don't have a left-facing arrow for that. So if I wanted to look at the dashboard in a prior year, I would have to go ahead and actually physically change my accounting year back to that prior year to run it for a prior period. It still does not cross years. Accounting doesn't cross years. Yeah, good question. Um, so notice each one of these reports then also has a print icon. So right, our print button. We've got a print button there and a print button and a print and a print and a print because they're all about pretty much printing the reports that you're wanting to see, okay? Um, so the, you know, like in this case, our, I think it just defaults in this case to our very first asset account in our chart of accounts, hence why it shows up there. Um, and in this case, like our budget versus actual, it just de defaults to budget, all budgeted items versus specific budgeted items. You know, so we've just set some defaults in that, folks, that it just reverts back to. But you have the capability to choose whatever you wish. So here's it's defaulting to my main checking account. But if, say, I want to go to, you know, as I was trying to sort of determine some stuff here for this, let's say I want to go and look at my weekly activity or monthly activity in my 941 taxes payable account. I highlight that and notice is it changes that weekly account balances report. And now when I click print, it brings up, and all of the reports do this, folks. Um, It'll bring up the graph options where I can change my page header text or font. I can change it from landscape to portrait or portrait to landscape. And then I simply click print. And then it should bring up the actual preview of that report in this case. And I can then physically send it to my printer or I can export it or do whatever I wish with that. Okay. Again, this, this is true for all of these reports, folks. Okay. So it does revert. You now it's, it's choosing my a tax payable account because that's what I've selected. If I just click the X, it clears it out and I can choose a different account if I wish. That report is only suitable really for one single account. I can also click the drop down arrow and it'll bring those in too. Um, this does only bring in liabilities, assets, liabilities, and fund balance accounts, folks. This does not include income or expenses. It is only for um, the balance sheet accounts, essentially. Ones, twos, and threes, okay? Um, budget versus actual is as described. It is actually our our budget to actual for either income or expenses. Each one of them are separate reports. It does default to the first of the accounting year through whatever date on your computer it is. But if I want to go, okay, I want to look at that through, say, the first six months or the first half of the year, I can change that. And then when I click on print, it brings up again a similar type graph options. And then I have this report that shows 51%. So my actual income uh, for the, through June was 178,344. My budget for the year, year is 323,874. So I'm about, I'm pretty much a little bit over budget on my income for the year. And a similar type function for my expenses as well, okay? Um, if I choose specific budgeted items, again, I have to choose a specific account. Okay, so here, general ties and offerings or expense, uh, you know, senior ministers. So there it is. It just basically compares our budget to our actual. This only will reveal budgeted accounts, hence why our account list is so short. Okay, so the reason why I've got only four income accounts is because I've only got four budget four accounts that are budgeted in terms of my income. Okay. Fund uh, fund receipts and disbursements. Again, so basically income and expense accounts for funds. So this does bring in all of my funds, and if I simply go to print, it will show each one of my funds listed across the bottom with the actual mon highest monetary value, with my receipts and disbursements based on whatever color I choose for that. The main difference on this report um, is I can choose a ledger, okay? But that's all of my funds, income and expenses. 
So, you know, on, my, on a ledger, if I have, say, a ledger, in this case, I've got a memorial fund with sub-funds, I can choose that if I wish. And then even more so, probably the more helpful of the two reports, or of these reports, of these two, of course, fund receipts and disbursements is income versus expense, which is always based on our funds. So it, I've, it's changed to expense, but if I do income versus expense, it does a comparison of where my income stands to my expense for my entire fund. Okay, so if again when I click on print, it brings it up in portrait or landscape and shows here's my income from my general fund, 179,000. Here are my expenses. So clearly my income to this point in the year it greatly exceeds my expenses. I guess that's a good thing. I find personally that something like our expense or income may be a little more helpful from the standpoint that for my I'm choosing my general fund because it's the one that has the most activity. If I click on print again, it shows here's how much here's here are all of the expenses which are linked to my general fund which have expenses currently posted for the year with the actual amounts that I've expensed through um, August 27th in this case. Okay. Yeah again folks this is these reports are most likely going to change a fair amount over the course of the next two or three or four versions. Once we start hearing from you in terms of what's working, what's not working, what we can enhance on it, what we can improve, but we wanted to give you something. Um, and again, you know, I, this is again better than we had before, which is nothing. So, um, all right, so we've got just another couple of minutes here. Um, Yeah, could you toggle on the income and expense? I think I did that. Folks, this is going to just, when you get version 20 installed, we'll just play with this, really. It's not, you know, if you can break it, we need to know how you broke it. And, um, you know, if you determine that something, you know, like I've already had somebody who said, you know, sent me on a version 21 user who said, you know, rather than having these, having the call outs on these fall in the middle of the graph, they said it would be better if there would basically be little, you know, arrows that would point to the section in the pie graph rather than, you know, because rather than having it do that, because as again, we pointed over to income here, notice, we click, click on print on that, that that's really, really difficult to see in terms of, it's, you can't read any of that in terms of what those other accounts are, because they're all overlapping. Um, so, you know, we've already had a suggested improvement for this, which I've forwarded on to our developers, and hopefully they'll incorporate that, so. Can I constrain the graph to specific funds only, i.e. general fund? Uh, Martin, only here under my income and expense report. That's it. Or under our account weekly balance. But again, this won't report on income and expense. This will only report on the fund. So if I go up here and choose my, say, general fund right up here, general operating fund balance, it does definitely show how the general fund changes of course, from each week. But those are the only two accounts that the reports that will do that. Fund receipts disbursement dollar amount will not go below the twenty thousand. Uh, I think honestly, Victoria, I don't know the answer to that. I think I'm pretty sure it will. I think, but I think that's based on a on a level of zero. So basically anything below 20,000 is presumed to be, you know, 19,999 or less, but the bottom line being zero. Uh, what do the reports look like in black and white? That's a good idea. That's a good question. Um, you know, again, they're grayscale essentially at that point. Um, but, you know, and they, you know, things like your, becomes a little bit more difficult to read, but certainly you grayscale certainly is certainly an option for you. When will my update be mailed or will I be able to download it? Yeah, Holly, it will be emailed to you. You know, I'm not sure if you're in the group that it was sent to already. You may want to check your spam folder or junk email. Um, but, you know, if not, please call us 800-533-5227. Let them know, find out, you know, when, if we've already sent, we already sent that to you. If we have, we can already send it. We can still send it to you either way. Um, but again, we just, want to make sure that we're trying to provide folks with good support and, uh, you know, not not making it so you're having to wait two hours for a support call. We try to, we're trying to not have those days occur anymore, folks. So, um, but certainly if you'd like to receive yours sooner than later and you haven't, please call us. I'm sure we can get that sent out to you, email to you. Um, 
Right. I'm not aware of any control on that, Victoria, with regards to these scales being set to anything lower. Yeah, that would be something that maybe you'll be added in a future version, maybe where you can set those levels. Uh, I hope that the ability to compare years on the graph will be an option in the future. Yeah, again, Barbara, that may be something we will, you know, uh, add in a future version. By all means, you know, folks, you can send those types of suggestions into our support at Church Windows email address, and uh, and we'll be happy to get those into suggestions. Again, this is just a framework, uh, you know, year to year or period or period to period comparisons. Maybe something that we're working on already. I just don't know. I'm sorry. Great questions. All right. Well, I'm not seeing anything else coming in. Uh, wait, hang on. Uh, can you do an account monthly balance report? Uh, yeah, there's not an option for monthly at this point, Rose. No, that's not. Monthly is not an option in this. I'm sorry. Again, if we do consider adding a annual comparison, I'm sure it would be pretty, probably pretty simple to consider for us to adding a monthly comparison as well. Um, but yeah, that's something that I would suggest sending to support at church windows with your customer number and name and just say, hey, we'd like to see a more a comparisons, period comparisons in our graphs in the dashboard. We'll get that into suggestions for you happily. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar for everyone. We hope it's been helpful, kind of give you a glimpse of this. Again, folks, play with this. You know, it's again, we're going to be changing this, I'm sure, in the near future in upcoming versions based on what folks are, are asking it to do. And if you have more further questions about it, please give us a holler. Again, 800-533-5227. And we look forward to seeing everyone at a future Church Windows webinar event. All right. Thank you all so much. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>